What's up everyone, we are back with a big day of MLB and NBA action here on Wednesday, April 17th. Our MLB picks for Monday haven't finished yet. We got off to a very good start though, cashing one of our biggest bets today. We had Baltimore minus 160. We really, really liked the under in that Yankees-Toronto matchup, but we ended up taking a push in that one. We had nine and they got exactly nine runs scored in that game. So kind of a disappointing ending there. We've got Boston minus 110. They're in extra innings. They're at home. So being at home and being in extras, that's a pretty good spot. Atlanta's leading right now and then we have the Golden State Warriors game coming up late tonight. So we won't have the result for that one in here, but we're pretty excited. So uh, sit back and watch that game while we edit this video. We're very excited for some NBA play in action. We have a good MLB slate coming up with lots of value. So let's dive back in and find us some more winners. Take a second and hit that like button to show some support for the channel and all the work we're putting in here every single day. If you're new, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's 100% free and can keep you from missing out on these picks. These videos are sponsored by StompTheSpread.com. Click the link in the description and go over there and join our free email list and check out our top confidence plays on all the major sports. Comment below with all the bets you're looking at today, and we will give you our best advice on all of them. We respond to absolutely every single comment, so let us know anything you want to say about my picks, these videos, or anything you see here. As always, our final picks will be in the pinned comment down below. Now let's get into our first game of the day, the San Francisco Giants taking on the Miami Marlins in Game 3 of their series down in Florida. In Game 2 of this series, we saw the Marlins come away with a 6-3 win. Not exactly what you would have thought, not exactly what the San Francisco Giants were hoping for. They're now going to have to get the win here in Game 3 of they want to win this series and just in general they've been having a little bit of a tough time overall they're hoping they can change that though by handing the ball here to Keaton Win. he comes in this game he will be making his fourth start of the season and he's been getting a little bit better as the season has gone on his last time out he was very good against the Tampa Bay Rays he gave, he gave only two earned runs over five innings of work he gave up five hits had six strikeouts and three walks in that one overall this season though things have not really been going his way and it's really not been going the Giants way when he's on the mound he's 0-3 on the season with an ERA of just over over five so not exactly looking dominant out there and neither is the Giants offense this season they've been very middle of the road over their last few games they have not been hitting the ball great you'd have thought they could have used this series against the Marlins as kind of something of a get right spot you would think they could hit the ball pretty well in this situation but that has not been the case the Giants are 17th in the majors in terms of runs scored their 18th in team batting average Michael Conforto is leading the way for them but his batting average is under 300 for this season he does have four home runs 14 RBIs he's having a good year don't get me wrong about that but in general this team is just not hitting the ball very well the Marlins come into this game they have to be feeling pretty good about the way things are trending they won that game six to three they've now got a chance to win this series which is not something I think they're gonna have a ton of chances to do this season but putting up six runs is pretty good for this offense they're hoping they can replicate that and give Trevor Rogers a little bit of run support he comes into this game fresh off of a very very good start against the Atlanta Braves where he gave up only two earned runs over five innings of work he had five strikeouts in that one only a single walk it was definitely his best performance of the year Although he's been trending in the right direction, he had a bad start against the Pirates, a pretty decent start against the Cardinals, and then that very good start against a very, very good offensive team in the Atlanta Braves. The Marlins in general, their offense has not been good this season, but like I just said, it's trending in the right direction. Jake Berger's off to a very, very good start in terms of driving in runs, but his batting average is only 228 on the season, so we're not exactly going to freak out about that. And unfortunately, he's on the IL now with a oblique injury, so who knows when he'll be back. Obliques can be extremely tricky, so just in general, the Marlins have to be a little bit concerned about where their offense is at as a team, but they're coming off a good offensive performance, so they have to feel good about that. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Giants are a slight favorite. The Marlins are basically even money. We see the over-under is sitting at 8.5, which is kind of interesting. In the last game, we saw 9 runs scored, so that would have gone over just barely. And in this one, we see both teams, they're slightly trending towards the over. Both of them are 10-7 and 7 to the over this season, so if you wanted to take a little bit of a look at that over, you definitely could but for me guys I'm definitely siding here with the Giants I think we see a decent start here from Keaton Wynn the guy is very due to get some run support finally he has not gotten a lot of help from his team and he's coming off of a very good start against a better offensive team than the Marlins so give me the Giants minus 115 in this one Next up, we've got the Pittsburgh Pirates going on the road to take on the New York Mets. The Pirates come into this game. Right now, they're playing the Mets. Currently, we see the Pirates are down 3-1 to one in the bottom of the eighth inning, so things are not looking great for them in that one. And all of a sudden, after their very, very hot start, we're seeing some concerning things from the Pirates. We saw Hayes was a late scratch in this game. We, we don't know if he'll play here on Wednesday, so we'll have to wait and see on that. But just in general, things not looking too hot for the Pirates right now. They're handing the ball here to Bailey Falter, hoping that he can like kind of stem the tide in this one. And he's been looking very, very good 
over his last two starts. He dominated the Orioles over six innings, only giving about a single hit in that game. And then he had a very good performance against the Phillies. He gave up only four hits and one earned run over five innings of work. He had three strikeouts in that one. The guy's off to a good start after really getting kind of shelled by the Marlins in his first outing this season, but he's 1-0 on the year. A 4.20 ERA is not terrible. This guy is off to a pretty solid start, and the Pirates in general got off to a great start to their season, but problems are starting to crop up. It doesn't look like this is going to be a very good offensive game from them. They've only scored one run so far in the game two of this series, and in game one, they only scored three runs, so just not hitting the cover off the ball anymore. They are still seventh in the majors in terms of runs scored. Their team batting average is still very good. All those numbers are looking good, but they're just not trending in the right direction right now. The Mets come into this game. They're going to be very happy to get that win if they can finally salt it away. It'll be their third straight win, getting them over 500 for what feels like the first time this season. They're handing the ball in this one to Luis Severino. He comes into this game. He'll be making his fourth start of the season. After getting absolutely shelled by the Milwaukee Brewers in his first outing, he seems to have figured things out. In five innings against the Cincinnati Reds, he gave up only a single earned run and had seven strikeouts. In five innings against the Kansas City Royals, that was his last time out. He gave up only a single hit and a single run, so it was just a one solo home run in that game. He did have four walks in that one, but also four strikeouts, so not terrible. On the season, he's one and one with a three ERA, so nothing really too terrible in that one. We definitely think the Mets are pretty happy with what they've seen from Severino in his last couple of starts. And just in general, the Mets have to be pretty happy with the fact they're finally starting to hit the ball just a little bit here. I mean, I mean, we're not going to act like their three runs against the Pirates is amazing, but at least it's something, and they've got to start somewhere. They've not gotten off to a good start hitting the ball. They're building, though. They're up to around middle of the majors in terms of runs scored, in terms of team batting average. They're actually above average. They're close to being the top two-thirds of the league, and their on-base percentage is very, very good. So this team is definitely trending in the right direction offensively, and they've got a decent starter out there on the mound. It makes sense that they're favored in this one. We see the Mets are minus 132 in this game. Not a lot of faith from the odds makers here in Bailey Falter, although he's not looked bad in his last two games. We have to feel pretty good about that. You also have to feel good about the Pirates are being plus 115 in this game. Also, Pittsburgh is 12-5 and five to the run line, so if you want to take a look at the run line, that definitely makes some sense to me. Guys, give me the Pirates plus 115 in this one. I definitely have a lot of faith in Falter here, but you could also look at the over-under in this game and take a definite look at the under. The Pirates are a slight over team, but they're not hitting the ball right now. The Mets are not a good offensive team at all, even though they're trending a little bit in the right direction, so if you can still find that eight and a half out there, I probably honestly like under eight and a half a little bit more than I like the Pirates straight up. One of these two plays I think is very likely to make it into our pinned comment, our, our core play is here for April 17th. Moving right along, guys, we've got the Texas Rangers going on the road to take on the Detroit Tigers. We saw the Tigers get a 4-2 win here in Game 2 of this series. The series is now tied up at one game apiece, so whoever gets the win here in Game 3 can feel pretty good about that. The Rangers are 9-9 nine and nine on the season, and they're handing the ball in this one to Dane Dunning. He comes into this game. He's going to be making his fourth start of the season, and he's off to a very consistent start. He seems to go around five or six innings in every start and give up three earned runs. You can kind of just count on that. The dude is getting touched up a little bit. Two of his starts were against the Houston Astros, so maybe we can cut him a little bit of slack for that. In his first start of the year, he did go six and a third against the Tampa Bay Rays, but in general, it seems like you can pretty much put it on the board. This guy's going to give up some runs. He's given up at least one home run in every outing this season, but in general, his numbers have been good. He's gotten really good run support. He's two and one on the season overall with a 4.5 ERA. 17 strikeouts through three starts isn't exactly fantastic. Not something we're looking to uh, throw him a parade for, but in general, he's not off to a terrible start but also not off to a great start. The Texas Rangers hitting the ball. They've been red hot here in the early goings, although obviously not so much yesterday and not so much in this series overall. Through the two games in this series, they've scored a grand total of three runs. That is not getting it done. Things are definitely cooling off for these red hot Texas Rangers bats. They're hoping they can find their way in this one though. They're definitely due for something of a resurgence. They're still fourth in the majors in terms of team batting average, 10th in the majors in terms of slugging percentage, and in the top five also on on-base percentage. The Tigers come into this game. They have to be feeling pretty good about the way things are looking right now. They're 10-7 and seven on the season overall, and they're handing the ball here to, to Tariq Skubal. He comes into this game. He's going to be making his fourth start of the season as well. He's coming off a great performance against the Minnesota Twins where he only gave up two hits over five innings of work. He had five strikeouts in that one as well. Just in general, he's been lights out in two of his starts and kind of got touched up by the Oakland A's. That's a little bit weird. He did go six and a third innings in that game. He had nine strikeouts, but he also gave up four earned runs and two home runs. So there were definitely some significant mistakes in there. In general, though, his season numbers look fantastic. He's 2-0 with a 2.08 ERA and 21 strikeouts through three games. 
that will definitely work. The Tigers have been one of the worst offensive teams in baseball this season. They've scored only 56 runs on the season. That has them in 27th in the league. Team batting average not looking so hot. Their best hitter, guys, their leader in batting average so far this season is batting only 222 on the year with three home runs. Not exactly tearing it up. This offense not looking great. Looking at the numbers for this game overall, we see the Rangers are plus 120. The Tigers are a pretty significant favorite, and the over-under is right where you would expect it to be. It's at 7.5 or 7. Guys, if you can find it at 7.5, I definitely wouldn't fault you for going ahead and taking a bite of that under. I don't think there's going to be very much offense in this game. However, we could see a bounce back here from the Texas Rangers. I do think that Dane Dunning is kind of doing okay here. I don't think they have to be too worried about him giving up a bunch of home runs to the Tigers. So I like the Texas Rangers plus 120 in this one. I don't know how often I'm going to be on this team this season. We still have a lot to find out about where they're going to be at. But in general, I think I like them a little bit in this spot, a little bit more than I like the under in this game since the numbers set so low. Next up, we've got the Atlanta Braves going on the road to take on the Houston Astros. Right now, we see the Braves are up one to nothing going into the sixth inning. So things are looking, I guess, okay for them, but not exactly like they've got things locked up right now. They, the Braves are dealing with some injuries coming into this game, so that's a little bit unfortunate, but they have won three of their last four heading into last night's game, and they have to feel good about that. They probably don't feel too bad handing the ball here to Max Freed, although he has had his struggles this season. They were all pretty much contained to that one game where he got absolutely blown apart by the Arizona Diamondbacks. His last time out, he dominated the Marlins. He went six and a third, gave up only four hits and a single earned run in that game, and he had four strikeouts, so I think we can safely say that he's back on track. His season numbers obviously don't look amazing, but I I think we're in for some solid play from him, some solid pitching. Moving forward, there's no reason to expect his struggles to become prolonged after having such a good start his last time out. In general, looking at the Braves' offense, it's been very, very good, nearly the absolute best in the league. They're third in terms of runs scored, but they're first in slugging percentage, batting average, and team on base percentage. They're just absolutely hitting the cover off the ball. Marcelo Zuna is leading the way. He's been hitting the ball extremely well. Things are just looking fantastic for this offense. They can expect to put up runs no matter who they're facing. And in this one, they're going up against the Houston Astros and JP France. He comes into this game. He's 0-2 on the season with an ERA over 8. He is not coming off a good start at all. He just got absolutely shelled by the Texas Rangers. It's the second time he's gotten knocked around by the Rangers this season. And he didn't look too great in his other outing this year, his opening season start against the New York Yankees. So things have looked pretty tough for France here in the early goings. Things have also looked very rough for the Houston Astros offense. They're not hitting the ball great aside from Jose Altuve, or at least not hitting the ball up to their normal standards. I mean, they do have a team batting average third in the league, but they're only 13th in runs scored. So I guess you could look at it as they're getting a little bit unlucky in terms of hitting the ball. But a lot of their runs have come in these big like blowout, these big like they score a ton of runs in one game, but then nothing in the next one. Like their last game, they only scored one run against the Atlanta Braves. This one, they still have zero runs quite a ways through the game. So things not looking great for this offense and things not looking great for their starting pitcher. All that is going to add up to me being very interested in the Atlanta Braves minus 136. I realize that Max Fried isn't exactly one of their best starters, but I think he's in for a decent outing against a team that is not having a lot of success hitting the ball this season. I don't know if this will end up as one of our core plays down in the pinned comment, but definitely give me the Atlanta Braves minus 136 in this one. I'm not too interested in the over under. It's set pretty high at nine and a half, and I think we could see a lot of offense, but I could also see the Astros only scoring like one run in this game, so we're not really too interested in that. Moving right along, we've got the Kansas City Royals going on the road to take on the Chicago White Sox. Game two of the series was delayed, so we're actually going to see them play two games in this one. It's going to be the first part of the doubleheader. That's the game we're looking at right now. The Royals got a 2-0 win in game one of this series, so they had to feel pretty good about that, and they have to be feeling great about how their bats have looked this season. They've been hitting the ball really well, and they can feel pretty decent handing the ball here to Brady Singer, who is off to an amazing start to his year. Over three starts, he's got a win-loss record of 2-0. He's got a 0.98 ERA. The guy is absolutely absolutely dealing out there. His last time out, he shut down the Astros through five innings. He gave up only five hits in a single earned run. He had four strikeouts in that one. And his first start of the year it was probably his best start overall. Actually, definitely his best start overall. He had 10 strikeouts through seven innings against the Twins and didn't give up a single run. He is throwing the ball great right now and has to feel fantastic with how his offense has looked. Things are just humming right along for the Kansas City Royals, who are 11-6 and six to start this season. I'm not going to say this team came out of nowhere, but it isn't exactly a squad that was talked about a ton here heading into the 
the season. They're going to be taking on the Chicago White Sox, who are pretty much on the opposite end of that spectrum. They're only 2-14 and 14 on the season overall, and they're handing the ball in this game to Jonathan Cannon. Not a lot to see about this guy. We don't really know what to expect out of him. He's going to be making his season debut, so it's going to be very interesting to see what he can do. The White Sox pitching in general has not looked amazing, and the biggest problem for this team is they couldn't hit the water if they fell out of a boat. They've scored only 34 runs this year. That's 30th in the majors. They're in basically last place in every major offensive statistical category. They just cannot score any runs at all, and I don't think we're going to see things change in this one. The Royals are a huge favorite in this game. They're minus 175, but what we're much more interested in this one is the over-under. I don't really expect Kansas City to jump out and score 10 runs in this game. You can still find some nines out there. I don't think we're going to see the White Sox score very much because they never score very much. They're a terrible offensive team. we got a very good starter on the bump for the Royals in Brady Singer, so give me the under in this game. This could be one of our bigger plays of the day, especially if we can still find some nines out there. So both teams have trends to the under this season. Give me the under in this one. Moving right along, we've got the New York Yankees going on the road to take on the Toronto Blue Jays. Right now, we see the Blue Jays are up 5-3 to three in the top of the eighth inning, so they're kind of in control in that game. They've got a decent chance to come away with the win. Just in general, the Blue Jays are starting to get a little bit healthy right now, and they have to feel pretty good with how things are going, despite being only 9-8 and eight on the season. If the Yankees can't make this comeback here in Game 2 of this series, they're going to be down two games to zero, and it's going to be back-to-back -back games of them not hitting the ball very well. The Yankees are definitely banking on their offense being pretty good, but they might not have to worry about that too much. Handing the ball here to Marcus Stroman, who's coming off a tough start to Miami Marlins, but other than that, he's looked very, very good this season. Against the Marlins, he did get about four earned runs and five innings of work. He had seven strikeouts, but four walks also. Just not his best start. He's been dominant already once this season against the Toronto Blue Jays, giving up only three hits over six innings. He had six strikeouts and only a single walk in that game. He's going to be hoping to replicate that outing. He's one and one on the season with a 2.12 ERA, so the guy has been dealing and he has some solid success already this season against the Blue Jays. Toronto has to be feeling a little bit better about how things are going. They're starting to get healthy right now. They're in line to win the first two games of the series against a division rival, so that's a pretty big deal. In this one, they're going to be handing the ball to Kevin Gozman. He comes into this game. He needs to turn things around. He's gotten absolutely shelled in his last two starts. He got obliterated by the Yankees his last time out. Then against the Rockies, he got obliterated once again. Not looking good at all. Big yikes from me. The Blue Jays offense is seeming to show some signs of life. They're still not up to average in the league in terms of overall production. That's going to be a problem. They're going to need to put up some runs, especially in this game, because I don't think they can depend on their starting pitcher, especially not in this matchup. That's why we're going to be looking at the Yankees in this game. They're only minus 116. This could be one of our bigger bets of the day if this number stays relatively the same. You could also look in the over-under in this game, but I'm not too interested in that. Both teams trend towards the under, but definitely give me the Yankees minus 116 in this one. I think that is way too cheap of a price. I think it should be more like minus 150 or even higher. Give me the Yankees in this one. They're going to get the win. Rolling right along here through these games, we've got the St. Louis Cardinals going on the road to take on the Oakland A's. In game two of this series, we currently see they just started things up. It's 0-0 zero zero in the bottom of the first inning. We got some pretty sad news here for Cardinal Nation. We saw Whitey Herzog pass away. Hall of Famer, great career. Tough to see one of the legends of the game go, but the Cardinals in general haven't gotten off to a great start to their season. They're going to be handing the ball in this one to Steven Matz. He comes into this game, he's 1-0 on the season, and he's been one of their, I guess, slightly more solid options out there on the mound. He did get a little bit roughed up his last time out by the Arizona Diamondbacks. He gave eight hits, only four and two-thirds innings. Only one earned run, though, so I guess that's not so bad. And it was a game the Cardinals ended up winning. He was dominant against Miami Marlins in the outing before that, and he did have a pretty good outing against the Dodgers, so just in general, the guy I can feel pretty good about where he's at. He's 1-0 on the season. He's got a 1.80 ERA, only eight strikeouts, but the Cardinals aren't really known for pumping out strikeout level pitchers. So if he's getting those ground balls, if he's able to make guys miss every so often, there's nothing wrong with that. The Cardinals offense has been a big problem this season. They haven't seen their veterans really get off to a very good start. Nolan Arenado is leading the way with only a 286 batting average. That's not what we're looking for. Paul Goldschmidt is not off to a good start at all. This team is just having a little bit of trouble here at the plate. They're, they're going to need to figure that one out if they want to take down the Oakland A's again. They did get the win in game one of the series. Like we said, game two just got started here. The A's are going to be handing the ball in this one to Paul Blackburn. He has been absolutely dominant here to start the season. In seven innings against the Cleveland Guardians to start a season, he gave up only three hits, zero earned runs, had three strikeouts that one. Against the Tigers in his second start, six innings, only three hits, zero earned runs. And then against the Washington Nationals, he lasted six and a third innings. He did give up five hits in that game, but once again, zero earned runs. The guy is absolutely dealing. It doesn't seem like anybody can figure out his stuff right now. He is looking 
absolutely dominant out there and you do need to look kind of dominant if you're going to be getting wins as an Oakland A's pitcher he, they're not having a good time at the plate at all there's no good news to report they're only, they've only scored 48 runs this season good for 29th in the majors just not a lot of positives to report for this offense not a good offensive team here at all this season and I don't really think we expect that to turn around in any sort of major way looking at the numbers for this game though we see the A's thanks to having a big edge there in the pitching matchup they are plus 120 and I think that big edge might be getting slightly overestimated but we're not going to really fall for that too much we're looking more at the over under in this game we see the Cardinals are 10 5 and 2 to the under this season the Oakland A's are 9 7 and 1 to the under and they're not hitting the ball very well right now at all guys the over under it's a very small number it's only seven and a half but we're definitely going to be on the under in this game i don't know for sure yet if it's going to make it into the pinned comment picks but this is definitely a very decent spot i don't think we're going to see much offense in this game we don't expect the cardinals to magically start hitting the ball and the oakland a's don't even have the pieces to be hitting the ball both pitchers are looking pretty good give me the under moving right along here guys we're looking at the los angeles angels going on the road to take on the tampa bay rays this is a crazy one guys we're seeing the angels and the rays are currently in the bottom of the 12th inning with the score tied up at five apiece they're trying to hash out who's going to win game two of the series we did see the angels get the win in game one but they're definitely burning through some bullpen guys they're definitely going very deep here into this game it's going to be interesting to see what they've got left in the tank the angels this season have to be kind of at least happy with how things are going they're hovering around 500 maybe they could be a better than 500 team this season you never know weirder things have happened but i can't think of any right now mike trout is heading the absolute cover off the ball as we expect him to do as he seems to do every single year of his entire career and in general the angels offense has looked pretty decent they're gonna be handing the ball in this one to reed detmers he comes into this game this left-hander he's been having a very good start to his season he's 3-0 with a 1.04 era he dominated he's dominated the red sox two times this season and he had a very good outing against the baltimore orioles this guy he's looking really good not a huge guy kind of a tricky left-hander he is just dealing right now he's got 26 strikeouts through only three starts he had a 12 strikeout performance against the boston red sox that is crazy stuff he looked fantastic in that game he has to be in line for another good start you would, you would really hope and it'd be nice to see the angels have some success out there for mike trout this offense has been a little bit better than middle of the road and it seems to be trending in the right direction although they're definitely hoping they can find a way to score at least one more run here against the tampa bay rays tampa bay is going to be handing the ball in this one to zach little he comes into this game he's looked pretty good here in the early goings as well he's 1-0 on the season with a 1.17 era he hasn't gotten a ton of run support just in general but this season he dominated the toronto blue jays he dominated the colorado rockies and in his last time out against the los angeles angels he only went four and a third innings he gave up six hits but escaped with only a single earned run so it's a little bit concerning he definitely got touched up in this matchup by the angels so can we really trust him to hold down the fort in this one it's kind of a tough look for me it's going to be interesting in this game they're going to need the starters to go deep with the bullpens working really really hard here in this big time extra innings game the race offense in general this season has been in the bottom third of the league they don't really have any big time bats that they can rely on they're only 19th in the majors in terms of run scored they're only 20th in the majors in terms of slugging percentage and on base percentage so not a lot of huge positives to report in that one we do see the rays are heavily favored in this game they're minus 132 we see the angels are plus 112 the over under in this game is set at eight i don't necessarily expect there to be a ton of offense in this game and i'm a little bit worried about the rays starter we're definitely going to be on the angels in this one plus 112 i think they find a way to score some runs I think they're going to get a lot of hits against Littell again, and I think this time they'll find a way to push some of those guys across the plate. This might not be one of my key plays, but I definitely like the Angels a lot. Next up on the slate, we've got the Cleveland Guardians going on the road to take on the Boston Red Sox. In game two of that series, we see the Red Sox are clinging to a 6-5 to five lead in the top of the ninth. Where they've got one out and runners on first and third, so we're really sweating it out with our Boston pick on that one. If they can get a couple more outs, if they can just get a double play ball, we'll be able to catch that ticket and feel really, really good about that one. In general, the Guardians have been hitting the absolute cover off the ball, and they're hitting the ball here to Ben Lively. He's going to be making his first start coming off the aisle. It's his first start of the season. Last year, he was getting some work out of the bullpen, and just in general, it's going to be interesting to see what this guy can actually do as a starting pitcher. He didn't really have dominant numbers last season at all. He went 4-7 and seven with a 5.38 ERA, so we're not exactly going to alert the press about this guy making a start for the Guardians. They're going to need all of that run support that they can possibly come up with in this one. They are still top 10 in most of the major statistical offensive categories and they have Stephen Kwan leading the way he's batting over 350 right now so things are looking pretty good in general we're also very devastated to see that the game is now tied going into the top still in the top of the ninth between Cleveland and Boston so 
That's pretty upsetting. We really hope the Red Sox can cling, cling to that lead, but all hope is not yet lost. The Red Sox have not been having a great time this season. We've seen Tyler O'Neill now go down. He's in the concussion protocol, so we'll see when he comes back, and we'll see how good he looks when he comes back. Pretty dumb. You see these guys out there colliding the outfield. Not the brightest stuff that you want to see on a nightly basis. They're gonna, the Red Sox are going to be handing the ball in this one to, to Tanner Hawk. He's gotten off to a very good start to his year, but he's coming off of a terrible start against the Angels where he got absolutely obliterated. It's his second start against the Angels. His first one was very good. His second one was terrible. He gave up seven runs, 12 hits in five and two thirds innings. Only four of those runs were earned, but guys, we're not exactly going to give him a pass for this one. He was getting touched up time and time again. He had two very good starts to, to open his season and things just came all apart in that last start. On the year, he's still two and one with a 2.04 ERA, but is that really going to hold up here? And what kind of offense are we going to see from the Red Sox, especially if they don't have their slugger out there in Tyler O'Neill? We don't really expect him to be out of the concussion protocol, but you guys might have better news on that than me. I I don't have any updates on that at time of recording. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see that Cleveland is plus 116. The Red Sox are minus 136. That kind of makes sense for me with the Guardians starting somebody coming off the IL and making their first start of the season, and they're not even normally a starting pitcher, so it's going to be pretty interesting to see how that goes. The Red Sox are hoping for a bounce back from their starting pitcher, so this is a tough spot, guys. I'm not really sure which way I want to go. I'm not a big fan of the Red Sox overall this season. I think we lean slightly towards the Guardians in this game, despite the weird situation surrounding their starting pitching. So go ahead and give me a small taste of Cleveland, but this is not going to be one of my core plays for the night. Moving on to the NBA portion of the video, guys, we're looking at the Miami Heat taking on the Philadelphia 76ers in the Eastern Conference play-in tournament. Miami comes into this game, they've kind of had to have felt like they were going to be part of this play-in tournament here for quite some time. They're 46 and 36 on the season overall. This is the time of year when the Miami Heat and Jimmy Butler really come out to play. It's been pretty crazy. We do have some pretty uh, interesting injury news, though unexpectedly, we see the Heat have ruled out Terry Rozier for this game. So they're not going to have their starting point guard in this one. That's not a great look. It's not what you would hope for. But regardless, the Heat are a next guy up kind of team. We'll see a little bit of an expanded role here for Tyler Hero. We'll see the ball in Jimmy Butler's hands a little bit more. And that's never a bad thing in the playoffs. He's known for his absolutely insanely elite playoff performances. He can take over games. He can look like a monster. We're hoping that Bam can match up well against Joel Embiid in this one. The Heat were definitely hoping to have some health coming into the playoffs this season as they've been derailed in the playoffs by injuries in very recent memory. And they're going to need to play extremely well against a Philadelphia 76ers team that all of a sudden is looking pretty healthy. The 76ers are going to have Joel Embiid for this game. He made the big comeback. Everybody was thinking he was going to be out for the season, but he is back. His team is still in the play-in tournament, but man, do they have aspirations to make it through here and to make some noise in the playoffs. The 76ers closed their season out playing amazingly well. They won eight straight games to get themselves into a very good good spot here in the play-in tournament, and I don't really think that there is a team that this squad is going to be afraid of facing in the first round of the NBA playoffs once they make it there. If they win this game, they'll get to take on the New York Knicks, which could sound like a scary matchup, but there aren't a lot of cupcake matchups here in the East in the first round, or just in the NBA in general, if we're being honest. The 76ers with a clean bill of health, they have to feel great about that. D'Anthony Melton's out, but he's been out, it feels like, forever. Kyle Lowry's ready to go. The big question in this one is what are we going to see from Tyrese Maxey here in the playoffs? We've expected big things from him all season, and he has not let us down. Tobias Harris is always something of an unknown. We've seen Kelly Oubre have some crazy, crazy moments here during the season, especially with all that time of Embiid being out and even Maxey missing some time. Kyle Lowry definitely gives him a veteran presence, so it's going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out. Looking at the season series, not super useful because there's going to be some games in there where Embiid didn't play. There's going to be some games in there with all kinds of injuries and different stuff. We did see it's been split two games to two with the Heat winning the first two and the 76ers winning the last two, but just in general, not a crazy amount we're going to be able to take from that. It is a little bit upsetting to see that the Heat are going to be without Terry Rozier. We do see that Miami is a league best 24, 15, and 2 against the spread when playing on the road. They have a ferocious, ferocious reputation for being a monster team in the playoffs. They're getting four and a half points in this game. They're going to be playing in a very tough environment, though. This isn't a game that I have a great read on guys. I'm very, very excited to watch it, but I don't really know how it's going to end. We're going to be slightly on the Miami Heat plus four and a half if you really, really want my lean against on this game against the spread, but I don't know, guys. This one I could see going either way, and we're looking at the over-under a little bit in this game. We see Miami is a big under team. We see Philadelphia. They're basically a 50-50 over-under team when playing at home, so with the Heat being such a big under team, 
but they're also being such a low number. I could see this being a very, very defensive minded contest, but the problem is we expect Embiid to get to the line, maybe not as much as he does in the regular season, but still quite a bit. I guess that will kind of slow down the game. So I'm not sure if that's going to translate into this being an over or under game. I'm sorry, guys. I don't have a great lean on this one. I guess give me a taste of the Miami Heat plus four and a half, but this is not a game that I'm likely to be betting myself. Next up on the docket, we've got the other Eastern Conference playing game between the Atlanta Hawks and the Chicago Bulls. Atlanta closed out their season looking pretty terrible, but they've had time to rest, guys, and we've seen Trey Young make his return. Deontay Murray is out there. So this squad is pretty much back at full strength. We expect to see all of their meaningful players ready to go in this one. Clint Capella's ready to go. We see Young and Murray ready to go. That's supposed to be the heart of this team. It'll be interesting to see what they can do coming off of a season where they went 36 and 46 overall and are still here clinging to a play-in spot. They ended up in that 10 seed. They're going to be going on the road in this game, so that's a little bit interesting. That's been a tough spot for them this season. They're a league worst 14 and 26 against the spread when they're playing away from home. What do we really expect to see out of Trey Young and Deontay Murray in this one? Trey Young has definitely had some playoff success. We don't really know what to expect to see from Murray. It's just kind of a mess here in the Eastern Conference, guys. What do we think this team is going to do? It's very, very hard to know. The Chicago Bulls closed out their season pretty strong. They really pushed the Knicks kind of to the limit in that game. I wasn't really sure why they were trying so hard in that one, but oh well, I guess give them credit for keeping things close. They did eventually lose that game. They finished their season off 39 and 43. They don't have the team they thought they would finish the season with, but they have DeMar DeRozan out there. And just in general, this team is looking pretty healthy coming into this game. We do see one major problem here on the injury report for the Bulls. Io DeSumo is going to be out for this game possibly he's technically questionable with a quad injury so we'll see what happens here at game time but man if you've got a tight quad like that can make things pretty tough out there he's a very exciting young player the Bulls really need him out there for a plethora of reasons so if he can't go that's going to be a very, very big deal. I don't know if it'll fully swing this pick for us, but it would definitely make me a little bit nervous. I guess since it's a play-in game, they have to be in desperation mode. He said on Tuesday that he's likely to be available for this game, so I guess we'll take his word for it. I guess we're going to proceed as if he will play, but definitely keep an eye on that injury report. The Bulls in general haven't been an elite team this season, and when we look at the season series, we see that Chicago came away with two wins early in the season before losing 113-101 to in their last game of the season. That was on the first of this month, so not too long ago, but I don't really know how much we can take away from that game. Just in general, guys, this is another tough one. We do see that Atlanta is a terrible against the spread team when playing on the road. I don't know what to expect uh, in terms of how many calls Trey Young is going to get. We have a lot of faith in DeMar DeRozan finishing off games here so three and a half I don't think that's a terrible spot I mean getting guarded by Deontay Murray might make things a little bit tougher for DeRozan or whoever is really coming out trying to uh you know carry the offense here for the Bulls but I don't know guys this is another tough spot I don't know if I'm going to be on this game in a big way either Give me Chicago, minus three and a half if you really want to bet against the spread in this one. But I do like the over-under in this game a decent amount. We see it's a pretty big number for a basically playoff game. It's 221 and a half. I definitely think this is a good under spot. I don't think we're going to see a crazy amount of offense in this game. I don't expect the Bulls to really let Trey Young just get off and shoot a ton of threes or anything like that. I don't expect Chicago to score a ton of points because that's not really their forte. I mean, they can at times. I think we'll see a slightly more grinded out game than Vegas is expecting. So if you really want to bet this game, my favorite pick on it is under 221 and a half. That's all the games we have for today, guys. Hit that like button for good luck on all of your bets and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know in the comments any questions you have on today's slate. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description to check out stumpthespread.com and we will see you guys tomorrow for more sports betting action.